Earlier this year, one of my Patreon supporters asked me an interesting question. If you were the queen of Germany, what is the first thing you would change? Obviously, Germany doesn't have a queen, and if it did, it definitely wouldn't be me. But I started thinking about it, and this is my answer. and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Feli, I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I've been living here in Cincinnati, Ohio on and off since 2016. And living here for seven years has definitely changed my perspective on my home country in certain ways. I realized things about German culture and the German system that I never really noticed before. Some things about Germany that I used to take for granted, I now truly appreciate, but I also realized that there are many things that I like better about the US. So when I read that question, I found it really intriguing and I couldn't stop thinking about it. So here are five things I would change about Germany if I could. Please keep in mind that this is a completely hypothetical scenario, like if we lived in a dream world where we could just piece together an ideal country out of Tetris blocks without it costing billions of euros or risking jobs or taking 10 years to complete. You get the idea. And of course, most differences between countries are the result of historical developments, of external circumstances, of differences in culture and mentality. There's a reason why things are different everywhere in the world and differences aren't good or bad per se. That's something to keep in mind when watching any of my videos, by the way. Differences are valid and important, and to me, they're super interesting to observe. But as a human being, of course, I also have personal preferences. Things that after living in two different countries, I started to like or not like so much for me personally. But of course, other people's opinions might be completely different than mine, and that's totally okay. With that being said, if I really were the queen of Germany and I could make changes however I wanted, the first thing I would change is German customer service. In my opinion, customer service in Germany isn't nearly as good as customer service in the US. Even though a lot of Germans that have been to the US before actually prefer the German way, they often find American customer service too fake, too superficially friendly, too pushy, especially at restaurants. They'd rather have a waiter that's real with them. And while I totally see that point, points. I also don't want to feel like I, as the customer, am bothering the waiter or store employee. I don't want to feel guilty for being here, but that's how it often feels to me in Germany. And that's why when I was younger, I was super hesitant about asking for something at restaurants. I didn't want to be extra or be a bother. Of course, there are also great customer service workers in Germany, but unfortunately, this does happen quite frequently. What do you think is better or worse in Germany compared to the US? I mean, one of the things that's worse, <laughs> the customer service is still hard to get used to. In Germany you say the Servus Muster Deutschlands, like it's just, these people are like, they're like bullying me. Like they're like acting like they have no time for me. I come into the store, they're like, oh, this guy. It's like, I am your paycheck. Like, do you, do you even want me to shop here? Should I just go and go to the next one? Like I get it, they're just normal people and it's a job and sometimes you have bad days or whatever, but I'm continually shocked. They're acting like they just don't want my money at all. Just to share a few of my experiences, one time I was getting lunch with friends and we were sitting outside when it suddenly started pouring in the middle of our meal and there was no waiter to be seen. So we grabbed our food and our stuff and walked inside. We told a staff member that we had to move inside but couldn't find our waitress. So we just sat at the first table we saw waiting for her to show up and kept eating. And once she finally came around, she literally bitched at us and said that we can't just switch tables like that. I don't know what she wanted us to do. I guess just sit in the rain and eat there. <laughs> Or another example that I remember very well was when I was at a restaurant in Munich with friends. We ordered drinks and then when we were ordering food, my friend wanted to get this combo deal that the restaurant offered that included a side and a drink. And she asked if she could make the drink that she had already ordered part of that combo. And the waiter just straight up said, nine. Just no. Now, usually we probably just would have been like, oh, okay, and moved on. And I probably wouldn't even remember the story today. But this was after my exchange semester in the US. So I already had different expectations for customer service. And I ended up getting involved and asked why this was impossible. And he just said, well, I already put it in the system, so I can't change it anymore. And I went, I kind of doubt that you wouldn't be able to take it out if you tried. I mean, could you at least try or ask your supervisor if that's possible? So yeah, I basically pulled a Karen and 
at the end it was possible after all. But now I just feel so bad for my past self and all other customers in Germany that don't dare to say something because they feel uncomfortable and like the waiter could get annoyed at them. Even though making the customer feel comfortable and answer your questions is technically their job. Now, one of the main explanations for this difference is that German customer service employees don't rely on tips for their income like many do in the US. But I'm not even asking for them to pretend that they're interested in my entire life story. I also don't need them to check in with me four times throughout my meal. That actually can be quite annoying. I just want to feel welcomed as a customer. I'd like to feel wanted there, comfortable to ask questions, even if they're dumb questions. And I'd like for them to come by every now and then, or at least just be around so that I can flag them down when I need anything. Sometimes it kind of seems like they're hiding in the kitchen the whole time. There's definitely some room for improvement there. Quick interruption for a public service announcement. We are down to the last few of our Glühwein mugs, the mold wine mugs on feelyfromgermany.com. These were made and imported from Germany. Ben and I designed these together. And once they're gone, they're gone. They're not going to come back. So make sure to be quick. Claim the last ones on feelyfromgermany.com and post. The second thing I would change about Germany, if I could, is German bureaucracy. This one probably doesn't come as a surprise to many people because our bureaucratic system truly doesn't have a good reputation, even among locals. It's not the same in every department, of course, but a lot of Behörden in Germany, so public offices slash government agencies, I never know what the right translation is, follow pretty complicated protocols that can turn one simple task into dozens of steps where files get handed back and forth forever and every step has to be followed by the book. So as a German resident, having to wait several several weeks or even months to get an appointment at a public office or to get a response to a form you submitted is normal. Plus, the government systems in Germany are pretty behind in terms of digitalization. One of my best friends actually works for the city of Munich and the stories she's told me about this are crazy. In some offices, every email still gets printed, physically filed, and edits are made by hand before it gets typed back into a computer. Or my brother told me that it happened several times to him that he sent an email to the tax office and then two weeks later received a letter in the mail with the response. I wish I was making this up. Some of these places also don't accept emails, but they do accept faxes. And this is similar in many other areas of life too, like in the medical field, where most files are still on paper rather than being in a digital system that can be accessed by other healthcare providers as well to know what treatments you've received in the past. Or when purchasing real estate. I was absolutely baffled by how quick and easy it was to buy a house here in the US compared to the bureaucratic hoops that you have to jump through in Germany for this. The notary appointment here in the US took like 20 minutes and it was only like a month from the day that we saw the house for the first time to the day we officially owned it, but it could have been even quicker if we had wanted to. In addition to that, there are also tons of positions in the system that are pretty much redundant and barely have any work to do. There's actually a whole joke genre about how civil servants in Germany sleep at work or go home at noon every Friday or can't be reached after 2 p.m. And unfortunately, I know from personal sources that there is some truth to that. But then at the same time, other positions are completely overworked. Not only does the bureaucratic system costs the German government a lot of money, it also slows down our economy. One of the inherent problems here is that most civil servants are verbeamtet, so they're tenured and can't be fired, and the longer they work in the system, the more money they make. So they don't really have an incentive to initiate changes that would make the system more efficient or cut their own jobs or increase their own workload. This even affects the quality of the German school system because many teachers are tenured civil servants as well. They're already moving away from that a little bit. So a lot of teachers nowadays aren't actually getting that status anymore, but most of them still have it. And while I think it's super important that our teachers get paid enough and have job security, I had way too many teachers that simply weren't very good at their jobs and pretty much only put in the bare minimum. And I mean, why would they put in more effort when it doesn't make a difference in their career or salary at all? This can also be super frustrating for teachers that do go the extra mile because it's not being rewarded in any way. So a lot of teachers that put in extra effort at the beginning of their career give up on that after a few years. In the US, on the other hand, both teachers evaluations and the test scores of students can affect a teacher's career and they can lose their job. Now, I'm not trying to give any policy 
policy suggestions here because I'm the last person that knows how to go about solving this problem in real life. But in a hypothetical world, I would probably move away from giving lifelong tenure to all civil servants and maybe only offer it to those that have proven themselves for a certain number of years. And I would definitely create more incentives to improve workflows and increase efficiency, a little more similar to running a regular profitable business. Another thing I do as queen of Germany is get rid of geoblocking. Germany isn't the only country that does this, of course, but just a couple weeks ago, the German TV channel ARD published a three-piece documentary about the rise and fall of Viva, which was a German music channel that launched in the 90s, like the German equivalent of MTV. And I really wanted to watch that, but of course, it wasn't available to people in the US. Well, good that I know my way around that with PIA, Private Internet Access. Shout out to them for sponsoring this video and for bringing all of our streaming experiences to the next level with an amazing deal. PIA is a virtual private network or VPN that allows you to hide your IP address and safeguard your internet connection through an encrypted tunnel. That's why I like to use it when I log into a public Wi-Fi at an airport or a hotel, for example. But I also use it whenever I want a website to think that I'm in Germany, right? right now, or in another one of the more than 90 countries that PIA has service in. Not only does this allow you to unlock thousands of additional shows and movies that you don't usually have access to in your home country on Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, and other streaming platforms, it can even save you money when booking plane tickets or buying video games. If you set your location to Australia, you can watch all of the Harry Potter movies on Netflix, for example, or just in time for Christmas, the movie Elf. Trying PIA is completely risk-free because they have a 30-day money-back guarantee. But even if you want to keep it, which I'm sure you will, they're giving you guys an amazing offer. If you go to piavpn.com slash Germany, I also put the link in the info box for you, you'll get the first four months for free. And even after that, you'll only pay $2.03 a month, which is 83% off of the regular price. And one subscription can be used on an unlimited amount of devices. So check out the link in the info box below and enjoy. The next point on my list of things I would like to change about Germany, if I could, has to do with people's mentality. And I really hope that my German viewers don't hate me after this, but I would change the negative outlook on life. Now, when I say it like that, it sounds a little harsher than it actually is. Of course, it's not like all people in Germany walk around like, I hate my life. Everything sucks. I mean, some do, but I'm talking more about this subtle pessimism that always seemed completely normal to me before I moved to the US. It's a little hard to grasp and put into words, but you'll notice this in everyday conversations, for example, where Germans can often come across a little more reserved, short, and not overly friendly. But even beyond that, I feel like there's a widespread mentality of always looking for potential problems and reasons why something could possibly go wrong or why something could be criticized. And before making major decisions, I think it's great and important to properly think things through and consider potential negative consequences, but it's not always necessary to do this for every little thing, and especially not for other people when you weren't asked. So what's new with you? I finally bought an air fryer and I'm really enjoying it. Oh, really? I've heard that those things have been linked to cancer and they're so expensive. I would just stick to using my oven. I mean, those type of gadgets are just a waste of money. Oh, well, my oven isn't the best, you know, so it made sense for me. I've had a lot of conversations of that nature in my life, but of course not every German does this. It's an overall observation of mine, a generalization, and I used to do this too. That was a normal way of making conversation for me. And that's why I also know that it often comes from a place of love, because you're genuinely interested and invested in the conversation. I never saw anything wrong with this before I moved to the US, and if you're German, I'm sure you don't either. Totally understandable. But suddenly in the US, when I shared something about myself or shared some good news, people were often even more excited than myself and just hyped me up. And I know that many Germans consider that superficial and fake, but to me, it was kind of liberating to not feel like everything I say, every life choice is immediately being evaluated in a way and met with skepticism and critical follow-up questions. And I think this also kind of ties in with the German hesitation of taking risks and stepping out of the comfort zone or doing things differently than the rest. If it doesn't make sense rationally, you might not actually do it because how would you explain or justify it to others or to yourself even? When I compare this to the mentality in the US, I often say that Germans like to ask why when Americans tend to be like, 
Why not? This is very simplified, of course, but a lot of the people here just focus a little bit more on the positive aspects and on staying optimistic. Here's a conversation I've had a lot over the last seven years whenever I met new people in Germany. Oh, you live in America? Why? Well, I initially went there on an exchange semester and then I really ended up liking it, so I kept coming back and now I have a green card. Oh, so you like it there? I don't think I could live there. I mean, have you seen the latest numbers on gun violence and then all of the fundamentalism? No. Yeah, I mean, of course the country has a lot of issues too, but there's a lot to like and it works for me personally for the current phase of my life. I might move back to Germany at some point, but yeah, I do actually really like it for now. Huh, interesting. Realistically, that conversation would have been a lot longer, but you get the point. Also, and I promise I'm almost done with this point, but I sometimes even feel like being straight up happy and excited about things or being a really big fan of something and showing that is almost perceived as naive and embarrassing in German society. Well, with the exception of being a soccer fan, that can get pretty crazy, but it's common to kind of play things down instead, put things into perspective. In German, I would use the word relativieren. So instead of saying, oh, my new job, yeah, I'm really liking it so far, my co-workers are amazing, and I'm really proud that I got the position. You might be more likely to hear something like, yeah, it's pretty good, um, you know, it's kind of dry and a lot of numbers, but it works for me, and it's super close to where I live, and I can drop my daughter off at daycare on the way there, so I can't complain. Long story short, sometimes I wish Germans could just allow themselves and others to be unapologetically happy, positive, and excited about something. And not in a sarcastic way, as we like to do it a lot, no in a genuine way, without feeling like you're being judged or acting dumb. You got an air fryer and are enjoying cooking with it? That's awesome for you. You get a good grade or a cool new job? Hell yeah. You're moving to a new country that you're excited to move to? That's really cool. And the fact that I wouldn't want to move to that country myself really shouldn't matter. Next up, the German school system. I already mentioned how the concept of tenured civil servants affects teaching, but there are a few more things that I would change about the school system specifically. I've actually made two whole videos on the German school system before. I'll link those up here for you guys and in the info box below. But one of the main things you need to know is that our current school system is still very similar to when it was first established in the 19th century and is still based on a rather authoritarian and old fashioned teaching approach. So I think it would be about time for a big general reform but education in Germany is Ländersache, so it's up to the 16 different states, which in real life makes a nationwide reform very difficult and unlikely. But again, hypothetically, that's probably what I would get rid of first, that every state has their own education system with their own curriculums, their own final exams, and their own textbooks. Not only are we probably wasting a lot of money by having 16 different school systems rather than one, it also makes it really difficult for students to move within Germany, because some states start their second languages at a different age, have completely different subjects, and for gymnasien, the highest level secondary schools, even the amount of years is different. In some states you'll graduate after 12th grade, in other states after 13th grade. And the fact that the final exams, such as the Abitur, vary so much between states makes it really difficult to compare final grades and GPAs. I would also get rid of the three-level school system that most states have, where after elementary school, students get divided into three different school types depending on their academic performance in fourth grade. There's Hauptschule, which ends after ninth grade. Kids can then either pursue one of the higher diplomas afterwards or start an apprenticeship. There's Realschule, which ends after 10th grade. And there's Gymnasium, which as I said, ends after 12th or 13th grade and is supposed to prepare students for university. At the end of gymnasium, students take the final exams for the Abitur diploma. The other diplomas don't actually allow you to attend a university. Now, while it's technically possible to move between these three school levels, it's not very easy in real life. Partly because of the difference in curriculums and subjects, which often means that students that do switch have to repeat a grade to catch up. Now, I don't know if the American school system is the better solution per se, I don't think the quality of your education should depend on how wealthy your family is, for example. But I like that students of all levels go to the same school and can then attend advanced courses for single subjects that they're really good at, or even collect college credit in so-called AP classes. I personally don't think that splitting students up based on their grades at age 10 is the best way to go. Some kids might be great at social studies and languages, but suck at math, and then end up in a lower secondary school level just because of that 
one subject. I don't think the system properly caters to the individual strengths and weaknesses of students, and it can also really mess with their self-confidence. Now, Germany actually does have schools called Gesamtschule, where the three school types are combined, and those are becoming more and more popular, but unfortunately, I don't have any personal experience with those, so I don't know how good that concept actually works. But if any of you guys went to a Gesamtschule or have kids who do, let me know what your experiences are in the comments. Maybe that would be the solution, to just make Gesamtschulen the standard. Another thing that I would add to German schools is this huge selection of extracurriculars that most schools here in the US have. I think it's so cool to have all of these different sports teams with your own field and the whole school coming to watch the game and cheer on their classmates. Most schools here have a football team, basketball, baseball, soccer, wrestling, but also track and field, golf, swimming, gymnastics, dance, cheerleading, marching bands, science clubs, debate clubs, drama clubs, choirs, and so much more. <laughs> and these extracurriculars are usually taken pretty seriously and done at a really high level too. Most school sports teams have practice four to five times a week. One of the reasons for that is that these skills can be an important factor in whether students get accepted to colleges after high school and might even score them a scholarship. And there's a lot of focus on finding the right teachers to teach and coach the extracurriculars. It's not uncommon that a teacher is specifically hired because they're a great football coach. In Germany, on the other hand, at least in my my experience in Bavaria, extracurriculars are mostly run by teachers who are motivated enough to do this in addition to their regular classes. And whether or not a school has a theater group or a school soccer team depends on whether the school currently has a teacher who's willing to do that. The school isn't going to specifically search for a soccer coach or a band teacher, and the activities that do take place usually only meet about once a week. But for the most part, after school activities in Germany take place in clubs and dance schools, etc., that are separate from the high school. Now, I don't think I'd want there to be pressure to do extracurriculars in order to get into a university. I'm glad that that works differently in Germany, but it would be awesome to have those classes to show students that pure academics aren't everything and to have the option to foster the students' non-academic talents and interests. Whether that's sports or music or arts or dance or chess or debating, you get the point. Those skills are valuable too, which is something that in the German school system really gets neglected in my opinion. And last but not least, this kind of ties back in with my first point about customer service, free water at restaurants. This one might sound kind of trivial, but it makes such a big difference. Well, in the US, when you go to a restaurant, the server will usually bring you free tap water as soon as you sit down or once you ask for it. That's not a common thing in Germany. In fact, I don't think I've ever experienced that. Instead, German restaurants will offer bottled water that you have to pay for. So when you ask for water at a restaurant, they'll usually ask you which size bottle you want and if you want still or sparkling water, and it will show up on your bill at the end. Some restaurants will bring you tap water when you specifically ask for it, but it's not very common to ask for, and as far as I know, they're not obligated to do that. Also, there's no free refills in Germany either. Now, I'm not quite sure how the business models vary between restaurants in Germany compared to the US, because I've always been told that German restaurants make a lot of their money with the drinks. In the US, I would assume that that's not the case with the free water and free refills for things like soda and coffee at most restaurants. But as I said, this video isn't supposed to be about the whys and hows and realistic economic consequences. So in my dream world, I would definitely bring free water and free refills to German restaurants. That was my list of five things that I personally would change about Germany after living in the US. Let me know in the comments what you think about these five points. I'd be curious to read your opinions and experiences. And let me know what you would change about Germany or about your home country if you could. By the way, when you're watching this, I'm actually currently in Germany because Yes, even though I just made this video, it doesn't mean that Germany and I don't get along anymore. I'm actually really excited to be home. So make sure to follow me on Instagram at Feli from Germany or on Facebook to see what Christmas in Germany looks like. And if you would like to support me and my channel, you can do that by sending a super thanks here on YouTube, by buying me a coffee or just join my Patreon community. Thank you guys so much for watching. And with that, I hope I'll see you next time. Tschüss.